now the first kind of orbit that we have as we had discussed is the low earth orbit so now low earth orbit basically you can see on the screen there are two kinds of orbits that we normally discuss one which is called as the polar orbit and the second one which is called as sun synchronous orbit now sun synchronous orbit is nothing but a very special case of polar orbit what kind of special case let's discuss that so first of all when we say polar orbit polar orbits lie in the polar plane they lie in the polar plane now what's the meaning of this word polar plane as you can see in this particular picture you have the earth's north pole and south pole which can be seen in this image like this so a particular orbit which is in this plane maybe a little bit of inclination maybe exactly aligned with the magnetic poles but it can also be a little bit inclined for example it could be an inclination of 20 degrees or maybe an inclination of 30 degrees but in that particular range in that particular plane then it will be called as polar plane so orbit which is in the polar plane which is slightly inclined from the poles or it is not inclined from the poles will be called as a polar orbit so most of the polar orbits they will be lying in this particular range and this kind of orbit most of the polar orbits or the low earth orbit will be in the range of 200 kilometers to up to 1000 kilometers most of these orbits will be in the range of 200 to 1000 kilometers it can go up to 2000 kilometers as well we can say in general taking the lowest and the highest limits we can say that something which is in the limit of 200 kilometers to up to 2000 kilometers can be called as low earth orbit but most of the polar orbits that we have they are in the range of below 1000 kilometers now there is a very special case of polar orbit which is called as sun synchronous orbit so what you see here is a kind of orbit which is a polar orbit but mostly in the range of 600 to 800 kilometers and it has been named as sun synchronous for a very special reason the reason is that this kind of an orbit it is synchronized with the local solar time so what is the meaning of local time or local solar time now we all know that there is a standard time that we follow in india we do have the indian standard time and the entire country follows the indian standard time but we all know that there is a standard time that we follow you have read this about in geography as well that when the sun has risen in arunachal pradesh it is still night in gujarat correct right? because the sun will keep on moving from east to west because of the rotation of the earth having happening from west to east so this we know so local solar time is different at each of the places correct right? the standard time is something that we are following so that the entire country is following the same time but the local solar time for each of the parts of the country will be different now what we do for this particular kind of a satellite is that we sync it with the local solar time if you look at this particular picture this is how it happens that the satellite will keep on revolving like this and it approximately takes 1.5 to 2 hours for one revolution to complete so in 1.5 to 2 hours it will come back to the same place so for example if we are looking at let's say this particular latitude then it will come back to this latitude exactly in 1.5 to 2 hours depending on the height that has been provided to a given orbit now what happens by that time is that the earth is also rotating correct by the time it comes back it will not come back to the same region right it will not come back to the same region it will not come back to the same place but the same latitude a different part of the world because the earth would have rotated by then so what we try to do is that at a given place at a given time it would show exactly similarly every day that for example if i need to take 10 am observations in new delhi then it will be synced in a manner that 10 am new delhi every day now this 10 am is not the standard time but the local time maybe it would be 12 noon maybe it could be sunrise i want to take the observations at sunrise every day irrespective of the standard time then in that case it is called as sun synchronous orbit so it has a very special application that whenever scientists for example have to make observations for a given place for a long duration of time they don't want to make the observation sometime in the noon sometime in the evening then in at the night maybe in the morning they don't want that what we need is precise data with respect to a given time at a given place so for that very purpose it is required that we have an orbit which is sun synchronized 
which is synchronized with the local solar time so that we can exactly observe the situation maybe it is for weather monitoring maybe it is for any other purpose for example it can be mineral observation it can be agricultural purposes it can be any other purpose as well so any purpose when we have to make the observations we usually try that we are following a pattern and to follow a pattern this kind of a orbit is required so this orbit will be required from that perspective so if we look at all the applications that are there for a low earth orbit low earth orbit will always have earth observation satellites or satellites which are also known as remote sensing satellites they are also known as remote sensing satellites why remote sensing because they are remotely sensing the earth remotely they are observing the earth so that's why they are called as remote sensing satellites so there are multiple applications that we can have for them it can be related to agriculture and soil it can be related to bio reserves and the environment it can be cartography meaning something related to the map then geology ocean and meteorology rural development urban development water resources natural resources disaster management support climate change studies so all these are the different applications that we can have for a satellite that has been placed in a low earth orbit so low earth orbit all these can be seen as different kinds of applications so most of the times why are we looking at these kind of applications because these satellites will be very near to the earth they will be able to observe the earth they will be able to take pictures of the earth in a very high resolution so that's why application point of view these are all the applications that we will have for a satellite which is placed in low earth orbit then after this we have the medium earth orbit now when we say medium earth orbit there are two important kinds of orbit in medium earth and we'll have to understand this also but first of all when we talk about the height from the surface of the earth it starts from approximately 2000 kilometers and we go up to 35786 kilometers roughly which is 36000 kilometers so the orbits that we have in this range they will be called as medium earth orbit so there are two particularly important types of orbits here one which is called as semi synchronous orbit and the second one which is called as molniya orbit so let's try and understand these two orbits first of all we have the semi synchronous orbit semi synchronous orbit is the orbit which is used for gps purposes and it is located at approximately 20000 kilometers from the surface of the earth just remember this this is from the surface of the earth and not the center of the earth so 20000 kilometers from the surface of the earth this is the orbit which is called as semi synchronous orbit why is it called as semi synchronous orbit because it is an orbit which has a revolution period of 12 hours that in 12 hours it will return back to the same place where it had started from so in case of a low earth orbit what did we look at we saw that the period of revolution can be one and a half to two hours that's it so in two hours of time it will return to the same latitude but when it comes to a semi synchronous orbit it will come back to the same latitude in 12 hours of time so that's why it is called as semi synchronous orbit the second kind of orbit is a very particular orbit which was invented by russia now why was it required why did russia have to invent this kind of an orbit just understand this and we'll have a better discussion of it when we come to the communication satellite so the picture that you see on your screen this is the molniya orbit that has been invented by the russians to take care of their communication systems so normally the communication satellites that we have they are placed in high earth orbit for example all the communication satellites that we have india has all these satellites have been placed in the equatorial orbit in the high earth orbit but molniya orbit is one orbit which is being used by the russians for their communication systems now one thing that you see here is that it is a highly eccentric orbit what is the meaning of highly eccentric meaning is if you look at the shape this is highly elliptical meaning what the value of e is high why did they do that they did it because they wanted that this kind of an orbit remains majorly in the northern hemisphere they wanted this orbit to remain in the northern hemisphere so that the communication purpose could be solved for russia because russia is in this part right in the polar regions so what they saw was that the equatorial orbits could not be used for the benefit of russia so that's why they thought that they have to invent an orbit where all the communication satellites by russia could be placed 
and they could make the use of this kind of an orbit. So that's why this orbit was invented by Russia so that they can take care of their communication needs. So two kinds of orbits, one is semi-synchronous and the other one is Molnia orbit. Then we come to the high earth orbit. Now when we talk about the high earth orbit, there are two kinds, one which is called as geosynchronous orbit and one which is called as geostationary orbit. Now when we say geosynchronous and geostationary, there is a difference between these two as well. And same as we had discussed for sun synchronous orbit, geostationary orbit is a special case of geosynchronous orbit. Geostationary orbit, just remember this, is a special case of geosynchronous orbit. So let's try and understand the difference between geosynchronous orbit and geostationary orbit. So you have geosynchronous and geostationary. Now what you see in the diagram is that you have a geostationary orbit which is in the equatorial plane. And you have a geosynchronous orbit which is little inclined, correct? This is precisely the most important difference between the two kinds of orbits. First of all, when we say geosynchronous, geosynchronous is a kind of orbit which is in the equatorial plane but can have little inclination. It can be a 5 degree inclination, 10 degree inclination, 20 degree inclination but in the equatorial plane with some inclination. The height will be what we discussed for high earth orbit that is 35,786 kilometers. At this point we see that geosynchronous orbit operates. One more thing about geosynchronous orbit is that it is elliptical in nature. It can be elliptical, it can be circular as well but most of the times generally they will be elliptical in nature. Now from an observer's point of view who is situated on the earth, what they would observe is that this particular satellite will come back to the same point every day at the same time because the period of revolution is 24 hours. In 24 hours, it completes one complete revolution and that's why you will see that if, for example, you have observed a geosynchronous satellite at 7 p.m. at your place, then the same satellite will again appear at 7 p.m. the next day as well. So this will be observed for a geosynchronous satellite. So that's why this is one orbit. The second orbit is a very special case of geosynchronous orbit which is called as geostationary. Now the word that has been used here is geostationary meaning that it is always stationary with respect to an observer on the earth. So what we saw for geosynchronous was that it will appear at the same time every day after 24 hours. But when it comes to geostationary orbit the satellites which are placed in the geostationary orbit, they will always remain fixed at that particular point. So it doesn't matter whether it is 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning or 8 a.m. in the morning, this satellite will always remain at this particular place. So that's why it has been named as geostationary orbit. So it also operates at 35,786 kilometers. Now this is a very precise number. I am taking this name again and again that this is the height of the orbit. Basically, this is the height to get the period of revolution to be 24 hours. That if you want a satellite to have the period of revolution as 24 hours, then in that case, you need a satellite working at this particular height. So this is a calculation that is done, a back calculation that is done to fix the height of the satellite. So for having 24 hours, you need this particular height. Now, geostationary orbit will always remain at this height and it will be circular orbit. It will be a circular orbit with no inclination. It will have a zero degree inclination with the equator of the earth. So that's the difference between geostationary and geosynchronous orbit. So let me quickly summarize the differences between the two. One hand you have geosynchronous orbit and on the other hand you have the geostationary orbit. What is the comparison between the two? First of all in terms of height. Both lie at 35,786 kilometers. In both the cases, the height is remaining the same. Then, the second is on the basis of inclination. So, on the basis of inclination, there can be various inclinations for geosynchronous orbit, right? It can be 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, as I said. And for geostationary orbit, it is always zero degree inclination with respect to the equator, right? So, this is the second point of comparison between the two. The third point is the shape. So geosynchronous orbit can be elliptical 
and it can be circular as well in some cases. Geostationary orbit is always circular. For an observer, it will appear at the same point every day at a given time. We discussed this, right? That if it is appearing at 7 p.m. every day, you will see that it will come back to the same point every day at 7 p.m. Then for geostationary orbit, what we know is that it will always remain fixed. That is, whether it is 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning, 7 a.m. in the morning, doesn't matter. It will always remain fixed and that's why it has been called as geostationary orbit. Now, think from the point of view of application. So from the point of view of application, we see that communication satellites can be placed here. Apart from that, navigation satellites can be placed here. When we talk about geostationary orbit, communication satellites can be placed here. Navigation satellites can be placed here as well. But at the same time, weather monitoring satellites can also be placed here. Why? Because for weather, what do you need? You need that you are always observing a fixed point from a given point in the satellite. That's why this satellite will always have a look at a particular given region and that's why you will be able to get the data with respect to weather all the time. So weather monitoring satellite can be also placed here. Apart from that, many of the military or defense related satellite can also be placed here. So geostationary and geosynchronous can have all these. Even for geosynchronous also military satellites are possible. They can be placed here. Now one last point that we can keep is on the basis of how many orbits are possible. For geosynchronous, there can be many possibilities because you just increase a little bit of inclination. There is a new orbit that you have. You change the shape of a bit. You change the eccentricity of the orbit. You have a new kind of orbit. But when it comes to geostationary orbit, it is only one single unique orbit. How is it unique? Three factors we had discussed. Height, inclination and shape. So when we talk about height, height has been fixed. Correct? One factor done. Second factor is shape. Shape has been fixed. Shape is always circular. Third was inclination. Inclination is always zero degree. So that's why since all the factors that we determined, all the factors remaining the same, what happens is that geostationary orbit is a very unique orbit. There is only one possibility of such an orbit. It cannot vary. And that's why because of all these reasons, you will have different kinds of geosynchronous orbit. So, these are few of the points of comparison between the two kinds of orbits. So just try to remember these points. They will help you in the examination. In the past, we have seen direct questions from here appearing where they have asked you the difference between a geostationary and a geosynchronous orbit. So these are the factors and on the basis of factors, these are the differences that you have for all these orbits.